So this is number three. What is the number of grams in 500 kilograms? And then they tell you that a kilogram equals a thousand grams. So a thousand grams equals a thousand of these things equals one kilogram. And they're asking how many of these is the same as 500 kilograms. Now, I, I always like to understand what we're talking about here. A kilogram weighs about the same as a pair of shoes or a toaster, six apples is about a kilogram, and then one gram is the size of a paper clip, a raisin, the weight of a dollar bill. That weighs one, those things weigh one gram. Now, 500 kilograms is about the same weight as a full-size horse, this thing. So I'm going to show you two ways to figure out how many grams are in kilograms. So I'm going to show you the, 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 the way that you probably learn first, where you take the number of grams and you multiply it by the number of kilograms. So, uh, so a thousand kilograms equals a, one kilogram. So we need to multiply this number by 500. So since a thousand is bigger than 500, I'm going to put the thousand on top. Now it's a lot of zeros. And here I'm going to keep the numbers nice and neat, and nice and lined up. I've noticed that lots of times when I teach math that students often make problem, make mistakes is because they don't keep their columns nice and neat. And believe me, in general, I am not a neat person. But when I do math, I try to stay as neat as I can. So now we're going to do a lot of multiplication by zero. And actually, we're going to do it five times. So get ready. Zero times zero is zero. I'm keeping the columns. Zero times zero is zero. Zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is still zero. Now, I'm going to move over one space. And when I do that, I like to put a long arrow to keep my columns nice and straight. So now I'm moving from this one over to this one. So I made a little two little eyes. So zero times zero is zero. 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, and then 0 times 1 is still 0. So I know I, I did a lot of zeros there, but that's okay. So again, I've done this one, so I need to put a little arrow to move over 1, and now I'm going to multiply by 5. 5 times 0 is still 0. 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is still 0, and then 5 times 1 is 5. So this is the trickiest math that we've done so far, 5 times 1. Now, I have my columns nice and neat, so I shouldn't have any problems. So watch, all these zeros come down, and I just put down a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 5. Now, if you remember using commas in there, you know that every time you have three numbers, you put a comma there. So we go from ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So 500 times a thousand is 500,000 or one half million. So that would be D right there. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do this so we can do a quick review of exponents. So if we have 500, 500 equals 5 times 100, right? So we see that. We know 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 100 is 500. So that's okay. Now, let's go one step further. If you remember that exponents, you could do the same thing. You can convert this 100 into 10 to the second power. So this equals this. This also equals this. Because 5 times 10 to the second power is the same thing as 5 times 100. 100 is 5 squared, 5 to the second power. Now, let's do the same thing with 1,000. A thousand equals 
one times a thousand, right? That's pretty straightforward, because anytime you multiply a number by one, it stays the same. But also, watch this. It's the same as one times 10 to the third. Now, how did I know that 10 to the third is the same thing as a thousand? Because look, 100 has two zeros, one, two, and that goes there. A thousand has one, two, three, that goes there. See it? Now, what I want to do is I want to multiply these two things together. So let's write it out this way. Watch. We have five times 10 squared, 10 to the second power, times one times 10 to the third power equals who knows? Well, we do know, but pretend we didn't do this one. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to put these two things together. Now, do I need to really multiply five times one? Because you know it equals five. So all I'm going to do is just bring down the five, and I want to group these two things together. I just want to put them next to each other, just so you can see what this looks like. Do you need to do this extra step? step? No, but I want to show you how it works. Now, here's the trick. When you're multiplying exponents, numbers that have the same base, they both have 10, but different powers. When you're multiplying, you're going to add the exponents. So 10 to the second power times 10 to the third power is the same thing as if you write it like this. Two plus three. Now don't forget this five, we still need that one. So I'm gonna put this one over here and we still don't know what this equals. Now watch this. The five still comes down, and now we're gonna multiply 10, two plus three is five. Now some of you guys have already seen it, you're like, oh, five zeros, one, two, three, four, five, that's how we did that. Now, there's our final answer. So what I did is you don't have to do it this way, but you are going to have to use exponents when you're in college, especially if you're taking chemistry or physics. So this is something you're going to see. So again, the final answer here is D. I did it both ways just to show you that you can do, you can get the right answer using different methods.